Britney Jean Spears is an American singer, dancer, and actress. Born in Macomb, Mississippi, and raised in Kentwood, Louisiana, she performed acting roles in stage productions and television shows as a child before signing with Jive Records in 1997. Spears' first and second studio albums, Baby One More Time, 1999, and Oops! I Did It Again, 2000, became international successes, with the former becoming the best-selling album by a teenage solo artist. Title tracks, Baby One More Time and Oops! I Did It Again broke international sales records. In 2001, Spears released her self-titled third studio album, Britney, and played the starring role in the film Crossroads, 2002. She assumed creative control of her fourth studio album, In The Zone, 2003, which yielded the worldwide success of the single Toxic. In 2007, Spears' much-publicized personal issues sent her career into hiatus. Her fifth studio album, Blackout, was released later that year, and spawned singles such as Gimme More and Peace of Me. Her erratic behavior and hospitalizations continued through the following year, at which point she was placed under a still ongoing conservatorship. Spears' sixth studio album, Circus, 2008, included the international chart-topping single Womanizer. Her seventh studio album, Femme Fatale, 2011, became her first to yield three top ten singles in the United States. She released her eighth studio album Britney Jean in 2013. Later that year, Spears began the four-year residency show, Britney, Peace of Me, at the Axis at Planet Hollywood Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. In 2016, Spears released her ninth studio album, Glory. Spears is regarded as a pop icon and credited with influencing the revival of teen pop during the late 1990s. She became the best-selling teenage artist of all time and garnered honorific titles including the Princess of Pop. Her work has earned her numerous awards and accolades, including a Grammy Award, six MTV Video Music Awards including the Lifetime Achievement Award, 10 Billboard Music Awards including the Billboard Millennium Award and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 2009, Billboard ranked her as the 8th overall artist of the decade and also recognized her as the best-selling female artist of the 20-hundreds, as well as the 5th overall. The Recording Industry Association of America, RIAA, lists Spears as the 8th top-selling female artist in the United States, with 34 million certified albums. She has sold 100 million albums and over 100 million singles worldwide making her one of the best-selling music artists of all time. According to Billboard Spears has sold about 22.38 million singles in digital downloads in US and is the fourth best-selling female artist since Nielsen Soundskin began. Rolling Stone recognized her instant success as one of the top 25 teen idol breakout moments of all time while VH1 ranked her 11th on their 100 Greatest Women in Music list in 2012, and Billboard named her the sexiest woman in music. Forbes reported that Spears was the highest-paid female musician of 2012, with earnings of $58 million, having last topped the list in 2002. Life and Career 1981-1997, Early Life and Career Beginnings Spears was born in Macomb, Mississippi, the second child of Lynn Irene Bridges and James Parnell Spears. Her maternal grandmother, Lillian Portal, was English, and one of Spears' maternal great-great-grandfathers was Maltese. Her siblings are Brian James and Jamie Lynn. At age three, she started attending dance lessons in her hometown of Kentwood, Louisiana, and was selected to perform as a solo artist at the annual recital. During her childhood, she also attended gymnastics and voice lessons, and won many state-level competitions and children's talent shows. Spears made her local stage debut at age five, singing What Child Is This, at her kindergarten graduation. She said about her ambition as a child, I was in my own world, I found out what I'm supposed to do at an early age. At age eight, Spears and her mother Lynn traveled to Atlanta, Georgia for an audition in the 1990s revival of The Mickey Mouse Club. Casting director Matt Cosella rejected her for being too young to join the series at the time, but
but introduced her to Nancy Carson, a New York City talent agent. Carson was impressed with Spears' vocals and suggested enrolling her at the Professional Performing Arts School. Shortly after, Lynn and her daughters moved to a sublet apartment in New York. Spears was hired for her first professional role as the understudy for the lead role of Tina Denmark in the off Broadway musical Ruthless. She also appeared as a contestant on the popular television show Star Search and was cast in a number of commercials. In December 1992, she was finally cast in The Mickey Mouse Club alongside Christina Aguilera, Justin Timberlake, Ryan Gosling, and Carrie Russell, but returned to Kentwood after the show was cancelled in 1996. She enrolled at Park Lane Academy in Macomb, Mississippi. Although she made friends with most of her classmates, she compared the school to the opening scene in Clueless with all the cliques. I was so bored. I was the point guard on the basketball team. I had my boyfriend, and I went to homecoming and Christmas formal. But I wanted more. In June 1997, Spears was in talks with manager Lou Pearlman to join the female pop group Innocence. Lynn asked family friend and entertainment lawyer Larry Rudolph for his opinion and submitted a tape of Spears singing over a Whitney Houston karaoke song along with some pictures. Rudolph decided he wanted to pitch her to record labels, therefore she needed a professional demo. He sent Spears an unused song of Tony Braxton, she rehearsed for a week and recorded her vocals in a studio with a sound engineer. Spears traveled to New York with the demo and met with executives from four labels, returning to Kentwood the same day. Three of the labels rejected her, arguing that audiences wanted pop bands such as the Backstreet Boys and the Spice Girls, and there wasn't going to be another Madonna, another Debbie Gibson, or another Tiffany. Two weeks later, Executives from Jive Records returned calls to Rudolph. Senior Vice President of Ondar Jeff Fenster stated about Spears' audition that it's very rare to hear someone that age who can deliver emotional content and commercial appeal. For any artist, the motivation the eye of the tiger is extremely important. And Britney had that. She then sang Houston's I Have Nothing, 1992, for the executives, and was signed to the label. They appointed her to work with producer Eric Foster White for a month, who reportedly shaped her voice from lower and less poppy delivery to distinctively, unmistakably Britney. After hearing the recorded material, President Clive Calder ordered a full album. Spears had originally envisioned Sheryl Crow music, but younger more adult contemporary but felt all right with her label's appointment of producers, since it made more sense to go pop, because I can dance to it it's more me. She flew to Chiron Studios in Stockholm, Sweden, where half of the album was recorded from March to April 1998, with producers Max Martin, Denise Pop, and Rami Yakoub, among others. 1998-2000, Baby One More Time and Oops. I Did It Again. After Spears returned to the United States, she embarked on a shopping mall promotional tour to promote her debut album. Her show was a four-song set and she was accompanied by two backup dancers. Her first concert tour followed, as an opening act for NSYNC. Her debut studio album, Baby One More Time, was released on January 12, 1999. It debuted at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200 and was certified two times platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America after a month. Worldwide the album topped the charts in 15 countries and sold over 10 million copies in a year. It became the biggest selling album ever by a teenage artist. The title track was released as the lead single from the album. Originally, Jive Records wanted its music video to be animated, however, Spears rejected it, and suggested the final idea of a Catholic schoolgirl. The single sold 500,000 copies on its first day and peaked at number one on the Billboard Hot 100, topping the chart for two consecutive weeks. It has sold more than 10 million as of today, making it one of the best-selling singles of all time. Baby One More Time later received a Grammy nomination for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance. The title track also topped the singles chart for two weeks in the United Kingdom, and became the fastest-selling single ever by a female artist shipping over 460,000 copies. 
it would later become the 25th most successful song of all time in British chart history. Spears is also the youngest female artist to have a million seller in the country. You Drive Me, Crazy was released as the third single from the album. It became a top 10 hit worldwide and propelled, Baby One More Time to sell even more. As of today, it has sold 30 million copies worldwide, making it one of the best-selling albums of all time. It is also the best-selling first album by any artist ever. The April 1999 cover of Rolling Stone featured Spears lying on her bed, covered with a bra, shorts, and an open top. The American Family Association, AFA, referred to the shoot as a disturbing mix of childhood innocence and adult sexuality and called to God-loving Americans to boycott stores selling Britney's albums. Spears responded to the outcry commenting, What's the big deal? I have strong morals. I'd do it again. I thought the pictures were fine. And I was tired of being compared to Debbie Gibson and all of this bubblegum pop all the time. Shortly before, Spears had announced publicly she would remain a virgin until marriage. On June 28, 1999, Spears began her first headlining, Baby One More Time tour in North America, which was positively received by critics, but generated some controversy due to her racy outfits. An extension of the tour, titled Crazy 2K, followed in March 2000. Spears premiered songs from her upcoming second album during the show. Oops. I Did It Again, her second studio album, was released in May 2000. It debuted at number one in the US, selling 1.3 million copies, breaking the sound scan record for the highest debut sales by any solo artist. The album sold over 25 million copies worldwide to date, making one of the best-selling albums of all time. Rob Sheffield of Rolling Stone said that the great thing about Oops! Under the Cheese Surface Britney's demand for satisfaction is complex, fierce, and downright scary, making her a true child of rock and roll tradition. The album's lead single, Oops! I Did It Again, peaked at the top of the charts in Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom and many other European nations. The album as well as the title track received Grammy nominations for Best Pop Vocal Album and Best Female Pop Vocal Performance, respectively. The same year, Spears embarked on the Oops! I Did It Again tour, which grossed $40.5 million, she also released her first book, Britney Spears Heart to Heart, CO written with her mother. On September 7, 2000, Spears performed at the 2000 MTV Video Music Awards. Halfway through the performance, she ripped off her black suit to reveal a sequined flesh-colored bodysuit, followed by heavy dance routine. It is noted by critics as the moment that Spears showed signs of becoming a more provocative performer. Amidst media speculation, Spears confirmed she was dating NSYNC member Justin Timberlake. She also bought a home in Destin, Florida. 2001 2002, Britney and Crossroads. In February 2001, Spears signed a $78 million promotional deal with Pepsi, and released another book CEO written with her mother titled A Mother's Gift. Her self-titled third studio album, Britney, was released in November 2001. While on tour, she felt inspired by hip-hop artists such as Jay-Z and the Neptunes and wanted to create a record with a funkier sound. The album debuted at number one in the Billboard 200 and reached top five positions in Australia, the United Kingdom and mainland Europe and sold over 12 million copies worldwide. Stephen Thomas Erlewine of All Music called Britney the record where she strives to deepen her persona, making it more adult while still recognizably Britney. It does sound like the work of a star who has now found and refined her voice, resulting in her best record yet. The album was honored with two Grammy nominations Best Pop Vocal Album and Best Female Pop Vocal Performance for Overprotected and was listed in 2008 as one of Entertainment Weekly's 100 Best Albums from the past 25 years. The album's first single, I'm a Slave for You, became a top 10 hit worldwide. Spears' performance of the single at the 2001 MTV Video Music Awards featured a caged tiger and a large albino python draped over her shoulders. It was harshly received by animal rights organization PETA, who
who claimed the animals were mistreated and scrapped plans for an anti-fur billboard that was to feature Spears. To support the album, Spears embarked on the Dream Within a Dream tour. The show was critically praised for its technical innovations, the piece de resistance being a water screen that pumped two tons of water into the stage. The tour grossed $43.7 million, becoming the second highest grossing tour of 2002 by a female artist behind Cher's farewell tour. Her career success was highlighted by Forbes in 2002, as Spears was ranked the world's most powerful celebrity. Spears also landed her first starring role in Crossroads, released in February 2002. Although the film was largely panned, critics praised Spears' acting and the film was a box office success. Crossroads, which had a $12 million budget, went on to gross over $61.1 million worldwide. In June 2002, Spears opened her first restaurant, Nilla, in New York City, but terminated her relationship in November, citing mismanagement and management's failure to keep her fully apprised. In July 2002, Spears announced she would take a six-month break from her career, however, she went back into the studio in November to record her new album. Spears' relationship with Justin Timberlake ended after three years. In December 2002, Timberlake released the song Cry Me a River as the second single from his solo debut album. The music video featured a Spears look-alike and fueled the rumors that she had been unfaithful to him. As a response, Spears wrote the ballad every time with her backing vocalist and friend Anit Artani. The same year, Limp Biscuit frontman Fred Durst said that he was in a relationship with Spears. However, Spears denied Durst's claims. In a 2009 interview, he explained that I just guess at the time it was taboo for a guy like me to be associated with a gal like her. 2003-2005, In the Zone and Marriages In 2003 Spears opened the 2003 MTV Video Music Awards with Christina Aguilera, performing like a virgin. Halfway through they were joined by Madonna, with whom they both kissed. The incident was highly publicized. Spears released her fourth studio album, In the Zone, in November 2003. She assumed more creative control by writing and CO producing most of the material Vibe called it a supremely confident dance record that also illustrates Spears' development as a songwriter. NPR listed the album as one of the 50 most important recording of the decade, adding that the decade's history of impeccably crafted pop is written on her body of work. In the Zone sold over 609,000 copies in the United States and debuted at the top of the charts, making Spears the first female artist in the SoundScan era to have her first four studio albums to debut at number one. It also debuted at the top of the charts in France and the top ten in Belgium, Denmark, Sweden, and the Netherlands. In the Zone sold over 10 million copies worldwide. The album produced the hit singles, Me Against the Music, a collaboration with Madonna, Toxic which won Spears her only Grammy for Best Dance Recording, Every Time and Outrageous. In January 2004, Spears married childhood friend Jason Allen Alexander at the Little White Wedding Chapel in Las Vegas, Nevada. The marriage was annulled 55 hours later, following a petition to the court that stated that Spears lacked understanding of her actions. In March 2004, she embarked on the Onyx Hotel tour in support of In the Zone. In June 2004, Spears fell and injured her left knee during the music video shoot for Outrageous. Spears underwent arthroscopic surgery. She was forced to remain six weeks with a thigh brace, followed by eight to twelve weeks of rehabilitation, which caused the Onyx Hotel tour to be cancelled. During 2004, Spears became involved in the Kabbalah Center through her friendship with Madonna. In July 2004, Spears became engaged to American dancer Kevin Federline, whom she had met three months before. The romance received intense attention from the media, since Federline had recently broken up with actress Shar Jackson, who was still pregnant with their second child at the time. The stages of their relationship were chronicled in Spears' first reality show Britney and Kevin, Chaotic. They held a wedding ceremony on September 18, 2004, but
but were not legally married until three weeks later on October 6 due to a delay finalizing the couple's prenuptial agreement. Shortly after, she released her first fragrance with Elizabeth Arden, Curious, which broke the company's first week gross for a perfume. In October 2004, Spears took a career break to start a family. Greatest Hits, My Prerogative, her first Greatest Hits compilation album, was released in November 2004. Spears' cover version of Bobby Brown's My Prerogative was released as the lead single from the album, reaching the top of the charts in Finland, Ireland, Italy, and Norway. The second single, Do Something, was a top 10 hit in Australia, the United Kingdom and other countries of mainland Europe. The Greatest Hits album sold over 5 million copies worldwide. In August 2005, Spears released Someday, I Will Understand, which was dedicated to her first child, a son, who was born the following month. In November 2005, she released her first remix compilation, Be In The Mix, The Remixes, which consists of 11 remixes. It has sold over 1 million copies worldwide. 2006-2007, Personal Struggles and Blackout in February 2006, pictures surfaced of Spears driving with her son Sean, on her lap instead of in a car seat. Child advocates were horrified by the photos of her holding the wheel with one hand and Sean with the other. Spears claimed that the situation happened because of a frightening encounter with paparazzi, and that it was a mistake on her part. The following month, she guest starred on the Will and Grace episode by, by Baby as closeted lesbian Amber Louise. She announced she no longer studied Kabbalah in June 2006, explaining, My baby is my religion. Two months later, Spears posed nude for the cover of Harper's Bazaar. The picture was heavily compared to Demi Moore's August 1991 Vanity Fair cover. In September 2006, she gave birth to her second child, a son. In November 2006, Spears filed for divorce from Federline citing irreconcilable differences. Their divorce was finalized in July 2007, when the couple reached a global settlement and agreed to share joint custody of their children. Spears' aunt Sandra Bridges Covington, with whom she had been very close, died of ovarian cancer in January 2007. In February, Spears stayed in a drug rehabilitation facility in Antigua for less than a day. The following night, she shaved her head with electric clippers at a hair salon in Tarzana, Los Angeles. She admitted herself to other treatment facilities during the following weeks. In May 2007, she produced a series of promotional concerts at House of Blues venues, titled The M&MS Tour. In October 2007, Spears lost physical custody of her children to Federline. The reasons of the court ruling were not revealed to the public. Spears was also sued by Louis Vuitton over her 2005 music video Do Something for upholstering her Hummer interior in counterfeit Louis Vuitton cherry blossom fabric, which resulted in the video being banned on European TV stations. In October 2007, Spears released her fifth studio album, Blackout. The album debuted at the top of charts in Canada and Ireland, number two in the US Billboard 200, France, Japan. Mexico and the United Kingdom and the top 10 in Australia, Korea, New Zealand, and many European nations. In the United States, Spears became the only female artist to have her first five studio albums debut at the two top slots of the chart. The album received positive reviews from critics and has sold over 3 million copies worldwide. Blackout won Album of the Year at MTV Europe Music Awards 2008 and was listed as the fifth best pop album of the decade by The Times. Spears performed the lead single Gimme More at the 2007 MTV Video Music Awards. The performance was panned by many critics. Despite the backlash, the single rocketed to worldwide success, peaking at number one in Canada and the top ten in almost every country it charted. The second single Piece of Me reached the top of the charts in Ireland and reached the top five in Australia, Canada, Denmark, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. The third single Break the Ice was released the following year and had moderate success due to Spears not being able to promote it properly. In December 2007, 
Spears began a relationship with paparazzo Adnan Galib. 2008-2010, Circus In January 2008, Spears refused to relinquish custody of her sons to Federline's representatives. She was hospitalized at Cedars Sinai Medical Center after police that arrived at her house noted she appeared to be under the influence of an illicit substance. The following day, Spears' visitation rights were suspended at an emergency court hearing, and Federline was given sole physical and legal custody of the children. She was committed to the psychiatric ward of Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center and put on 5,150 involuntary psychiatric hold. The court placed her under temporary, and later, permanent conservatorship of her father James Spears and attorney Andrew Wallet, giving them complete control of her assets. She was released five days later. The following month, Spears guest starred on the How I Met Your Mother episode 10 sessions as receptionist Abby. She received positive reviews for her performance, as well as bringing the series its highest ratings ever. In July 2008, Spears regained some visitation rights after coming to an agreement with Federline and his counsel. In September 2008, Spears opened the MTV Video Music Awards with a pre-taped comedy sketch with Jonah Hill and an introduction speech. She won Best Female Video, Best Pop Video and Video of the Year for Peace of Me. A 60-minute introspective documentary, Britney, for the record, was produced to chronicle Spears' return to the recording industry. Directed by Phil Griffin, for the record was shot in Beverly Hills, Hollywood and New York City during the third quarter of 2008. The documentary was broadcast on MTV to 5.6 million viewers for the two airings on the premiere night. It was the highest rating in its Sunday night time slot and in the network's history. In December 2008, Spears' sixth studio album Circus was released. It received positive reviews from critics and debuted at number one in Canada, Czech Republic and the United States, and inside the top ten in many European nations. In the United States, Spears became the youngest female artist to have five albums debut at number one, earning a place in Guinness World Records. She also became the only act in the SoundScan era to have four albums debut with 500,000 or more copies sold. The album was one of the fastest selling albums of the year and has sold 4 million copies worldwide. Its lead single, Womanizer, became Spears' first number one in the Billboard Hot 100 since, Baby One More Time. The single also topped the charts in Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Finland, France, Norway, and Sweden. It was also nominated for a Grammy in the category of Best Dance Recording. In January 2009, Spears and her father James obtained a restraining order against her former manager Sam Lutfi, ex-boyfriend Adnan Galeb and attorney John Erdley all of whom, court documents claim, had been conspiring to gain control of Spears' affairs. The restraining order forbids Lutfi and Galeb from contacting Spears or coming within 250 yards of her, her property or family members. Spears embarked on the circus starring Britney Spears in March 2009. With a gross of US $131.8 million, it became the fifth highest grossing tour of the year. In November 2009, Spears released her second greatest hits album, The Singles Collection. The album's lead and only single, Three became her third number one single in the US. In May 2010, Spears' representatives confirmed she was dating her agent Jason Trawick and that they had decided to end their professional relationship to focus on their personal relationship. Spears designed a limited edition clothing line for Candies, which was released in stores in July 2010. In September 2010, she made a cameo appearance on a Spears-themed tribute episode of American TV show Glee, titled Britney Britney. The episode drew Glee's highest ratings ever. 2011-2012 Femme Fatale and The X Factor In March 2011, Spears released her seventh studio album Femme Fatale. The album peaked at number one in the United States, Canada, and Australia, and peaked inside the top ten on nearly every other chart. Its peak in the United States ties Britney with Mariah Carey and Janet Jackson for the third most number ones among women. It has sold one million copies in the United States and 2.2 million worldwide 
and has been certified platinum by the RIAA. The album's lead single Hold It Against Me debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 100, becoming Spears' fourth number one single on the chart and making her the second artist in history to have two consecutive singles debut at number one, after Mariah Carey. The second single Till the World Ends peaked at number three on the Billboard Hot 100 in May, while the third single I Wanna Go reached number seven in August. Femme Fatale became Spears' first album in which three of its songs reached the top ten of the chart. The fourth and final single Criminal was released in September 2011. The music video caused controversy when British politicians criticised Spears for using replica guns while filming the video in an area of London that had been badly affected by the 2011 England riots. Spears' management briefly responded, stating, the video is a fantasy story featuring Britney's boyfriend, Jason Trawick, which literally plays out the lyrics of a song written three years before the riots ever happened. In April 2011, Spears appeared in a remix of Rihanna's song Sand M. It reached number one in the US later in the month, giving Spears her fifth number one on the chart. On Billboard's 2011 year-end list, Spears was ranked number 14 on the Artists of the Year. 32 on Billboard 200 Artists and 10 on Billboard Hot 100 Artists. In June 2011, Spears embarked on the Femme Fatale Tour. The first 10 dates of the tour grossed $6.2 million, landing the 55th spot on Polestar's Top 100 North American Tours list for the halfway point of the year. The tour ended on December 10, 2011 in Puerto Rico after 79 performances. A DVD of the tour was released in November 2011. In August 2011, Spears received the MTV Video Vanguard Award at the 2011 MTV Video Music Awards. The next month, she released her second remix album, Be In The Mix, The Remixes Volume 2. In December, Spears became engaged to her longtime boyfriend Jason Trawick, who had formerly been her agent. Trawick became a CEO conservator of Spears, alongside her father, in April 2012. In January 2013, Spears and Trawick ended their engagement. Trawick was also removed as Spears' CEO conservator, restoring her father as the sole conservator. In May 2012, Spears was hired to replace Nicole Scherzinger as a judge for the second season of the U.S. version of The X Factor joining Simon Cowell, L.A. Reid, and fellow new judge Demi Lovato, who replaced Paula Abdul. With a reported salary of $15 million, she became the highest-paid judge on a singing competition series in television history. She mentored the teens category, her final act, Carly Rose Sonnenkler, was named the runner-up of the season. Spears did not return for the show's third season and her spot was filled by Kelly Rowland. Spears was featured on Will.I.M Scream and Shout, which was released as a single from his fourth studio album, Number Will Power, 2013. The song later became Spears' sixth number one single on the UK singles chart and peaked at number three on US Billboard Hot 100. Scream and Shout was among the best selling songs of 2012 and 2013 with denoting sales of over 8.1 million worldwide. The accompanying music video was the third most viewed video in 2013 on Vivo despite the video being released in 2012. In December, Forbes magazine named her music's top earning woman of 2012, with estimated earnings of $58 million. 2013-2015, Britney Jean and Britney, Peace of Me Spears began work on her eighth studio album, Britney Jean, in December 2012 and enlisted Will.I.AM as its executive producer in May 2013. During the production of Britney Jean, Spears recorded the song Ooh La La for the soundtrack of The Smurfs 2 which was released in June 2013. On September 17, 2013, she appeared on Good Morning America to announce her two-year residency show at Planet Hollywood Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, titled Britney, Peace of Me. It began on December 27, 2013, and will include a total of 100 shows throughout 2014 and 2015. During the same appearance, 
Spears announced that Britney Jean would be released on December 3, 2013, in the United States. It was released through RCA Records due to the disbandment of Jive Records in 2011. Britney Jean became Spears' final project under her original recording contract with RCA, which had guaranteed the release of eight studio albums. The record received a low amount of promotion and had little commercial impact, reportedly due to time conflicts involving preparations for Britney, Peace of Me. Upon its release, the record debuted at number four on the U.S. Billboard 200 with first week sales of 107,000 copies, becoming her lowest peaking and lowest selling album in the United States. Britney Jean debuted at number 34 on the UK Albums Chart selling 12,959 copies in its first week. In doing so, it became Spears' slowest charting and lowest selling album in the country. Work Bitch was released as the lead single from Britney Jean on September 16, 2013, one day earlier than expected after being leaked online. It debuted and peaked at number 12 on the US Billboard Hot 100 marking Spears' 31st song on the chart and the fifth highest debut of her career on the chart, and her seventh in the top 20. It also marked Spears' 19th top 20 hit and overall her 23rd top 40 hit. It also entered the top 10 on the US Billboard Hot Digital Songs chart at number 6 and debuted at number 2 on both the US Billboard charts Hot Dance Club Songs and Hot Dance Electronic Songs. Also its debut on the U.S. Billboard Pop Songs chart at number 25, marks Spears' 31st chart entry, pushing her past Mariah Carey, 30, for the second most entries to the chart's October 3, 1992, launch. The song marks Spears' highest sales debut since her 2011 number one hit Hold It Against Me. Work Bitch also had commercial success in the UK debuting and peaking at number 7 on the UK singles chart and also peaked at number 2 on the UK dance chart. The song also charted well in several other countries, peaking within the top 10 of the charts in Brazil, Canada, France, Italy, Mexico, Spain, and South Korea. The second single Perfume premiered on November 3, 2013, two days earlier than originally announced. It debuted and peaked at number 76 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. Perfume also charted on the U.S. Billboard Pop Songs chart, it debuted at number 37, reaching number 22 weeks later. In October 2013, she was featured as a guest vocalist on Miley Cyrus's track SMS, Bangerts, taken from her fourth studio album Bangerts, 2013. It debuted in the Billboard charts at number 10 in U.S. Bubbling Under Hot 100 Singles, number 29 in the U.S. Pop Digital Singles, and number 70 in the U.S. Hot Digital Songs. On January 8, 2014, Spears won Favorite Pop Artist at the 40th People's Choice Awards at the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles. For the week of July 26, 2014, Alien debuted and peaked at number 8 on the U.S. Bubbling Under Hot 100 singles despite not being released as a single from Britney Jean. In August 2014, Spears confirmed she had renewed her contract with RCA and that she was writing and recording new music for her next album. Spears announced through her Twitter account in August 2014 that she would be releasing an intimate apparel line called The Intimate Britney Spears. It was available to be purchased beginning on September 9, 2014 in the United States and Canada through Spears' Intimate Collection website. It was later available on September 25 for purchase in Europe. The company now ships to over 200 countries including Australia and New Zealand. On September 25, 2014, Spears confirmed on Good Morning Britain that she had extended her contract with the Axis and Planet Hollywood Resort and Casino, to continue Britney, Peace of Me for two additional years. In March 2015, it was confirmed by People magazine that Spears would release a new single, Pretty Girls, with Iggy Azalea, on May 4, 2015. The song debuted and peaked at number 29 on the Billboard Hot 100 and charted moderately in international territories. Spears and Azalea performed the track Live at the 2015 Billboard Music Awards from the Axis, the home of Spears' residency, to positive critical response. 
Entertainment Weekly praised the performance, noting Spears gave one of her most energetic televised performances in years. On June 16, 2015, Giorgio Moroder released his album, Deja Vu, that featured Spears on Tom's Diner. The song was released as the fourth single from the album on October 9. In an interview, Moroder praised Spears' vocals and said that she did a good job with the song and also stated that Spears sounds so good that you would hardly recognize her. At the 2015 Teen Choice Awards, Spears received the Candy's Style Icon Award, her ninth Teen Choice Award. In November, Spears guest starred as a fictionalized version of herself on the CW series, Jane the Virgin. On the show, she danced to Toxic with Gina Rodriguez's character. 2016 present, glory and continued Vegas residency. In 2016, Spears confirmed via social media that she had begun recording her ninth studio album. On March 1, 2016, V Magazine announced that Spears would appear on the cover of its 100th issue, dated March 8, 2016, in addition to revealing three different covers shot by photographer Mario Testino for the Milestone publication. Editor-in-chief of the magazine, Stephen Gann, revealed that Spears was selected for the V100 issue because of her status as an icon in the industry. On the decision, Gann stated, who in our world did not grow up listening to her music. In May 2016, Spears launched a casual role-play gaming application titled Britney Spears, American Dream. The app, created by Glow Mobile, was made available through both iOS and Google Play. On May 22, 2016, Spears performed a medley of her past singles at the 2016 Billboard Music Awards. In addition to opening the show, Spears was honored with the Billboard Millennium Award. On July 14, 2016, Spears released the lead single, Make Me, from her ninth studio album, featuring guest vocals from American rapper G-Eazy. The album, Glory, was formally released on August 26, 2016. On August 16, 2016, MTV and Spears announced that she would perform at the 2016 MTV Video Music Awards. The performance marked Spears' first time returning to the VMA stage after her widely controversial performance of Gimme More at the 2007 show nine years earlier. Along with Make Me, Spears and G-Eazy also performed the latter's hit song Me, Myself, and I. Spears appeared on the cover of Marie Claire UK for the October 2016 issue. In the publication, Spears revealed that she had suffered from crippling anxiety in the past, and that motherhood played a major role in helping her overcome it. My boys don't care if everything isn't perfect. They don't judge me, Spears said in the issue. In November 2016, during an interview with Las Vegas Blog, Spears confirmed she had already begun work on her next album, stating, I'm not sure what I want the next album to sound like. I just know that I'm excited to get into the studio again and actually have already been back recording. In January 2017, Spears received four wins out of four nominations at the 43rd People's Choice Awards, including Favorite Pop Artist female artist, social media celebrity as well as comedic collaboration for a skit with Ellen DeGeneres for The Ellen DeGeneres Show. Artistry Musical Style Following her debut, Spears was credited with leading the revival of teen pop in the late 1990s. The Daily Yomuri reported that M music critics have hailed her as the most gifted teenage pop idol for many years but Spears has set her sights a little higher she is aiming for the level of superstardom that has been achieved by Madonna and Janet Jackson. Rob Sheffield of Rolling Stone wrote, Britney Spears carries on the classic archetype of the rock and roll teen queen, the dungaree doll, the angel baby who just has to make a scene. Following the release of her debut album, Chuck Taylor of Billboard observed, Spears has become a consummate performer, with snappy dance moves, a clearly real albeit young and funk defied voice. You Drive Me, Crazy, her third single, demonstrates Spears' own development, proving that the 17-year-old is finding her own vocal personality after so many months of steadfast practice.
Stephen Thomas Erlewine of All Music referred to her music as a blend of infectious, rap-inflected dance pop and smooth balladry. Oops, I did it again and subsequent albums saw Spears working with several contemporary Rand B producers, leading to a combination of bubblegum, urban soul and raga. Her third studio album, Britney derived from the teen pop niche, are rhythmically and melodically, sharper, tougher than what came before. What used to be unabashedly frothy has some disco grit, underpinned by Spears' spunky self-determination that helps sell hooks that are already catchier, by and large, than those that populated her previous two albums. Since In The Zone, Spears has explored and heavily incorporated the genres of electropop and dance music in her albums, as well as influences of urban and hip-hop music which are most present in In The Zone and Blackout. She has also experimented with genres such as dubstep, first on Blackout's Freak Show and again on Hold It Against Me from Femme Fatale. Vocals Spears possesses a soprano vocal range of three octaves and two notes. Prior to her breakthrough success, she is described as having sung much deeper than her highly recognizable trademark voice of today, with Eric Foster White, who worked with Spears for her debut album, Baby One More Time being cited as shaping her voice over the course of a month upon being signed to Jive Records to where it is today distinctively, unmistakably Britney. Rami Yakoub, who CEO produced Spears' debut album with lyricist Max Martin, commented, I know from Denise Pop and Max's previous productions, when we do songs, there's kind of a nasal thing. With NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys, we had to push for that mid-nasal voice. When Britney did that, she got this kind of raspy, sexy voice. Guy Blackman of The Age wrote that teehee thing about Spears, though, is that her biggest songs, no matter how committee created or impossibly polished, have always been convincing because of her delivery, her commitment, and her presence. Spears expresses perfectly the conflicting urges of adolescence, the tension between chastity and sexual experience, between hedonism and responsibility, between confidence and vulnerability. Producer William Orbit, who collaborated with Spears on her album Britney Jean, stated regarding her vocals, Britney didn't get so big just because she put on great shows, she got to be that way because her voice is unique, you hear two words and you know who is singing. Influences Spears has cited her major influences in her career as being Madonna, Janet Jackson and Whitney Houston, her three favorite artists as a child whom she would sing along to, day and night in her living room, Houston's I Have Nothing was the song she auditioned to that landed her record deal with Jive Records. Throughout her career, Spears has drawn frequent comparisons to Madonna and Jackson in particular, in terms of vocals, choreography, and stage presence. According to Spears, I know when I was younger, I looked up to people, like, you know, Janet Jackson and Madonna. And they were major inspirations for me. But I also had my own identity and I knew who I was. In the 2002 book Madonna Style by Carol Clerk, she is quoted saying, I have been a huge fan of Madonna since I was a little girl. She's the person that I've really looked up to. I would really, really like to be a legend like Madonna. After meeting Spears face to face, Janet Jackson stated, she said to me, I'm such a big fan, I really admire you. That's so flattering. Everyone gets inspiration from some place. And it's awesome to see someone else coming up who's dancing and singing, and seeing how all these kids relate to her. A lot of people put it down, but what she does is a positive thing. Madonna said of Spears in the documentary Britney, for the record, I admire her talent as an artist. There are aspects about her that I recognize in myself when I first started out in my career. She has also named Michael Jackson, Mariah Carey, Sheryl Crow, Otis Redding, Shania Twain, Brandy, Natalie Imbruglia, Justin Timberlake, Prince, Beyonce, Bruno Mars, Selena Gomez, and Ariana Grande as sources of inspiration. Legacy Spears became an international pop culture icon immediately after launching her recording career. Rolling Stone magazine wrote, one of the most controversial and successful female vocalists of the 21st century, she spearheaded the rise of post-millennial teen pop. Spears early on cultivated a mixture of innocence and experience that broke the bank. 
she is listed by the Guinness World Records as having the best-selling album by a teenage solo artist for her debut album, Baby One More Time which sold over 13 million copies in the United States. Melissa Ruggieri of the Richmond Times-Dispatch reported, she's also marked for being the best-selling teenage artist. Before she turned 20 in 2001, Spears sold more than 37 million albums worldwide. As of 2011, she has sold over 100 million records worldwide, making her one of the best-selling music artists of all time based on album sales alone. She was also ranked as the fourth VH1's 50 Greatest Women of the Video Era show list, ahead of most of her contemporaries and only behind veterans Madonna, Janet Jackson and Whitney Houston. Spears is also recognized as the best-selling female artist of the first decade of the 21st century, as well as the fifth overall. In December 2009, Billboard magazine ranked Spears the eighth artist of the 2000s decade in the United States. Spears is known for her iconic performances and music videos. The music video for her debut single, Baby One More Time, was ranked number one on TRL's final countdown of the most iconic music videos. At the 2000 MTV Video Music Awards, before performing Oops! I Did It Again, the singer appeared behind a backlit screen, and descended a spiral staircase and started performing, I Can't Get No, Satisfaction while wearing a tuxedo. After performing a shortened version of the track, she tore the tuxedo off, revealing a skin-tight flesh-colored outfit. The following year, Spears performed her single I'm a Slave for You. Jocelyn Vina of MTV summarized the performance, saying, draping herself in a white python and slithering around a steamy garden setting surrounded by dancers in zebra and tiger outfits Spears created one of the most striking visuals in the 27-year history of the show. She also duet The Way You Make Me Feel with pop singer Michael Jackson at his 30th anniversary concert a few days earlier. During the opening of the 2003 MTV Video Music Awards on August 28, 2003, Spears joined Madonna, Christina Aguilera, and Missy Elliott. Halfway through the performance, Madonna kissed Spears and Aguilera on the lips. The kiss between Spears and Madonna generated strong reaction from the media. This performance was listed by Blender magazine as one of the 25 sexiest music moments on television history. MTV listed the performance as the number one opening moments in the history of MTV Video Music Awards. Barbara Ellen of The Observer wrote, Spears is famously one of the oldest teenagers pop has ever produced, almost middle-aged in terms of focus and determination. Many 19-year-olds haven't even started working by that age, whereas Britney, a former mouse eater, was that most unusual and volatile of American phenomena a child with a full-time career. While other little girls were putting posters on their walls, Britney was wanting to be the poster on the wall. Whereas other children develop at their own pace, Britney was developing at a pace set by the ferociously competitive American entertainment industry. In 2011, Adam Markovitz of Entertainment Weekly commented on the cultural significance of Spears' voice and music, We don't ask a whole lot from Britney Spears as an entertainer, we'll still send her straight up the charts simply because she's Britney. She's an American institution as deeply sacred and messed up as pro wrestling or the filibuster. Musically, though, Spears will always have to measure up to her own gold standards of pop euphony, the operatic slither of 2004's Toxic and the candied funk of 2000's Oops, I Did It Again. Spears is no technical singer, that's for sure. But backed by Martin and Dr. Luke's wall of pound, her vocals melt into a mix of baby talk coo and coital panting that is, in its own over-processed way, just as iconic and propulsive as Michael Jackson's yips or Eminem's snarls. Britney Spears was Yahoo's most popular search term between 2005 and 2008, and has been in a total of seven different years. Spears was named as most searched person in the Guinness World Records book edition 2007 and 2009. She was later named as the most searched person of the decade 2000-2009. Spears has been cited as a musical inspiration by contemporary artists. Gwyneth Paltrow's character in 2010 drama film Country Strong was inspired on the singer's public meltdown. 
According to film director Shauna Fest, that's where this movie came from. I mean, I was seeing what was happening in the media to Britney Spears. I think it's tragic how we treat people who give us so much, and we love to see them knocked down to build them back up again, to knock them down again. Nicki Minaj has cited Spears as a major influence on her career, and commented, the fact that she came back out with just so much fire inspires me, and it inspires young women and people all over the world. It just inspires you. A lot of my fans feel like they are the underdog and feel like they are the people who aren't ever accepted for themselves, or who are laughed at or poked fun at forever. It just goes to show that once you keep at whatever it is you are doing, people may not like you, people may not love you, but they will have to respect you at the end of the day. And that respect is all that matters. Lana Del Rey said, I'm not really interested in a ton of female musicians but there is something about Britney that compelled me the way she sings and just the way she looks. Del Rey also said that the music video for Toxic inspires her. During the 2011 MTV Video Music Awards, Lady Gaga said that Spears taught us all how to be fearless, and the industry wouldn't be the same without her. Gaga has also cited Spears as an influence, calling her the most provocative performer of my time. Miley Cyrus credits Spears as her biggest inspiration, and has referenced the singer in her hit song Party in the USA. 2009, Spears' personal breakdown was also cited as an inspiration for Barry Manilow's album. 15 Minutes Spears has also influenced many other contemporary artists, including Katy Perry, Megan Trainor, Demi Lovato Kelly Key, Christine Barge, Little Boots, Charlie XCX, Marina and the Diamonds, Tegan and Sarah, Pixie Lott, Grimes, Selena Gomez, Haley Steinfeld, T. Nash, Victoria Justice, Cassie, and the Saturdays. Fergie of the Black Eyed Peas revealed to The Hollywood Reporter that she was happy with Spears' return to the music industry, and continued, It's amazing. For this many years being in the business, and everything she's been through, it's wonderful to see her make this huge of a comeback. Really, it's a beautiful thing. Simon Cowell explained that he is fascinated by Britney. The fact that she's one of the most talked about not just pop stars but people in the world today, means that you've got this star power. She's still hot, she's still having hit records and she's still controversial, there's a reason for that. Jessica Young and Hai Oyeon of the Korean girl group Girls Generation have also been compared to Spears, due to their blonde hair and the latter's abilities as a dancer. Marina and the Diamonds named Spears as the main influence behind her album Electra Heart, stating that, I think people thought I was joking about that for a long time. But when I was a teenager there was a genuine connection with this sweet girl who also had this very sexual side that people didn't really want to accept, Britney is really smart. And in the way that she inspired Electra Heart, if you step back from all the cynical stuff, it actually focuses on the idea of innocence being mixed with darkness. For some reason I really like that combination. I suppose because you don't really connect innocence with darkness. Diamandis has also stated that Spears is her main influence when it comes to popular culture and that Spears is one she aspired to being growing up. Spears has had a direct influence on singer Porcelain Black's work after growing up around her music as a child. Black describes her music as a love child between Marilyn Manson and Spears. Bebo Norman wrote a song about Spears, called Britney, which was released as a single. Boy Band Busted also wrote a song about Spears called Britney, which was on their debut album. South Korean singer, Boa has also spoken of love and Spears' influence on her. First meeting in 2003 while Spears was promoting In The Zone Britney would later provide a writing credit to the song Look Who's Talking on Boa's eponymous debut English album. Spears' version of the song leaked in 2012. Spears also regularly participates in Spirit Day to combat bullying of LGBTQ youth and bullying. People magazine and MTV reported that October 1, 2008, the Bronx's John Philip Sousa Middle School, named their music studio in honor of Britney Spears. Spears herself was present during the ceremony and donated $10,000 to the school's music program. Other Ventures Product and Endorsements 
In 2000, the singer released a limited edition of Glasses titled Shades of Britney. In 2001, Spears signed a deal with shoe company Skechers, an $8.78 million promotional deal with Pepsi, their biggest entertainment deal at the time. Aside from numerous commercials with the latter during that year, she also appeared in a 2004 Pepsi television commercial in the theme of Gladiators with singers Beyoncé, Pink, and Enrique Iglesias. On June 19, 2002, she released her first multi-platform video game, Britney's Dance Beat, which received positive reviews. In March 2009, Spears was announced as the new face of clothing brand Candies. Derry Martyr, chief marketing officer for the brand, explained why they choose the singer, saying, Everybody loves a comeback and nobody's doing it better than Britney. She's just poised for even greater success. In 2010, Spears designed a limited edition line for the brand, which was released in stores in July 2010. In 2011, she teamed up with Sony, Makeup Forever and Plenty of Fish to release her music video for Hold It Against Me, earning her $500,000 for the product placement. Spears also teamed up with Hasbro in 2012 to release an exclusive version of Twister Dance, which includes a remix of Till the World Ends. The singer was also featured on a commercial, which was directed by Ray K, to promote the game. Spears was also featured on the commercial of Twister Rave and the game included a Twister remix of Circus. Spears' range of commercial deals and products also includes beauty care products and perfumes. She released her first fragrance with Elizabeth Arden, Curious in 2004, which broke the company's first week gross for a perfume. By 2009, she had released seven more fragrances including the popular perfume Fantasy, which earned her the recognition of the best-selling celebrity fragrance line on the market. The singer's Elizabeth Arden scents make up 34% of celebrity fragrance sales. In 2010, Spears released her eighth fragrance, Radiance. In March 2011, company brand Sense filed a lawsuit against Spears and Elizabeth Arden seeking $10 million in damages claiming that the singer and her father, Jamie, stopped paying their 35% commission that was agreed as part of the contract terms. In July 2011, a Los Angeles judge denied the request by the company lawyers, claiming the fact that Spears is still under conservatorship. Brand Sense, however, stated that they would appeal the decision. In 2011, Radiance was reissued in a new fragrance titled Cosmic Radiance. Worldwide, Spears sold over 1 million bottles in the first five years, with gross receipts of $1.5 billion. Spears has released 16 fragrances through Elizabeth Arden. In 2016, Spears teamed up with Glow Mobile to create her own role-playing game, Britney Spears, American Dream. The app officially launched in May 2016 and is compatible with iOS and Google Play. On June 17, 2016, Spears announced the release of her 20th fragrance, Private Show. Philanthropy The singer founded the Britney Spears Foundation, a charitable entity set up to help children in need. The philosophy behind the foundation was that music and entertainment has a healing quality that can benefit children. The foundation also supported the annual Britney Spears Camp for the Performing Arts, where campers had the opportunity to explore and develop their talents. In April 2002, through the efforts of Spears and the Britney Spears Foundation, a grant of $1 million was made to the Twin Towers Fund to support the children of uniformed service heroes affected by the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, including New York City Fire Department and its Emergency Medical Services Command, the New York City Police Department, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey the New York State Office of Court Administration and other government offices. However, it was reported in 2008 that the foundation had a deficit of $200,000. After the singer went through conservatorship, her father and lawyer Andrew Wallet zeroed out the effort, leading to its closure in 2011. On October 30, 2001, Spears alongside Bono and other popular recording artists under the name Artists Against AIDS Worldwide, released a single titled What's Going On, 
with the intention to benefit AIDS programs in Africa and other impoverished regions. In the wake of Hurricane Katrina in 2006, Spears donated $350,000 to Music Rising. Later in 2011, the singer raised $200,000 during an evening of Southern Style at a private residence in Beverly Hills to benefit the St. Bernard Project, with the help of several celebrities, including Hilary Duff, Selena Gomez, Kelly Osborne, Kellen Lutz, and Kim Kardashian. Spears has also helped several charities during her career, including Madonna's Kabbalah-based Spirituality for Kids, Cancer Charity Gilda's Club Worldwide, Promises Foundation, and United Way, with the latter two focused on giving families from various disadvantaged situations new hope and stable foundations for the future. On October 24, 2015, Spears donated $120,000 to the Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation. In addition, $1 of each ticket sale for her Las Vegas residency show, Britney, Peace of Me, was donated to the non-profit organization. Spears also fundraised for the charity through social media, in addition to selling limited-edition merchandise, with all proceeds going to the NCCF.